Hi everyone, it looks as though several people are still logging in, so we'll wait another minute before getting started. Thank you for your patience. Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Mandy Holmes and I'm the Communications Manager with Enchouse Interactive. I'm delighted to be facilitating today's collaborative webinar with Integration Partners and Enchouse Interactive. A few housekeeping items before we get started. We welcome any questions you may have. Please use the GoToWebinar chat pane on the right side of your screen to submit questions at any time throughout the webinar. Questions will be addressed at the end and will be followed up if we run out of time. And the webinar is being recorded. You will receive a copy of the slide deck and the recording of this webinar via email over the next few days. Now for a brief introduction of our presenters today. We've been very fortunate to have John Cray deliver a few presentations for us now. John is an Inchouse Interactive VP of Product Management with responsibility for defining the global strategy and release plans for Inchouse Contact Center products. John has over 25 years of experience delivering contact center and CRM solutions and has published articles and papers on topics ranging from the future of contact centers and customer service to optimizing operating system security. We also have Josh Blalock, Senior Microsoft UC Technical Consultant at Integration Partners, guiding customers in the strategy and deployment of Microsoft UC solutions within their respective organizations. With over 13 years as an engineer of various Microsoft servers and operating systems, Josh most recent area of expertise focuses on the Skype for Business and Office 365 practice areas. Josh was awarded the Microsoft MVP award in the Office Servers and Services category in 2017 and continues to serve the Microsoft UC community via webcasts, blog posts, and regular user groups. So with that said, let me hand you over to Josh and John. Hello, everyone. My name is Josh Playlock. Mandy, thank you for that very kind introduction. Uh, today, I'd like to get us started off by talking about the state of Microsoft phone system in Office 365, uh, formerly known as Cloud PBX. All right. So a little bit about uh, integration partners before uh, before we dive into phone system too deep here. Uh, we offer a variety of consulting services. Uh, I come from the Microsoft side of the house in particular, and my specialty is my Microsoft UCs, centering on Skype for Business, uh, Skype for Business Online, uh, and now Microsoft Teams most recently. Uh, the company has also been named the uh, Palo Alto Networks 2017 Regional Partner of the Year, Eastern. Uh, we have a number of certifications, as can be seen here, ASE, uh, CNSC 7.0, pre-sales SE cert. Uh, and then we have uh, a variety of educational services that are offered as well. We also provide managed services via a 24-7, 365 days a year network operations center. Uh, and finally, we were named uh, one of the top places to work in 2017 by the Boston Globe. All right, so a brief history on Microsoft Phone System. Microsoft Phone System first was released to the public as Cloud PBX. Uh, it went gen to general availability on December 1st in 2015. Cloud PBX uh, was renamed Phone System just last year. This was announced at Microsoft Ignite. 
Uh, there was a, num a number of other big announcements surrounding phone system and the Office 365 uh, communications ecosystem, and a number of other renames, including uh, dial-in conferencing was changed to audio conferencing, um, and there, there was, uh, yeah, a few others as well. Uh, what is phone system? Essentially, it's a virtual PBX. It, it, uh, it lives in Microsoft's Office 365 cloud. Um, and when you think about a PBX, it provides PSDN capabilities to an organization. And this is a virtual PBX that essentially gives your organization, your Skype for Business Online users or Teams users at this stage, uh, the capabilities they need to have a dial pad, to have call control functionality, uh, to, to be able to have place and receive phone calls. Uh, and when paired with a calling plan in, in, uh, in Microsoft's Office 365, you then have a full PSTN solution, uh, cloud-based. Uh, phone system actually was surfaced and enabled within the Microsoft Teams client just at the end of this last year, at the end of Q4. Microsoft made the announcement that phone system would be coming to the Teams client and they released a very detailed roadmap, not just for calling, but also meetings and messaging. And that roadmap had a large number of Q4 deliverables centering around uh, your, your general basic phone system capabilities, placing and receiving calls, basic call handling, a number of other things. And much of that was actually delivered on at the end of Q4 and a couple items spilled over to the beginning of Q1 2018. Uh, and have since been delivered on. Now, before we get too deep into just phone system, I want to take a minute to step back and, and kind of look at where this is coming from. Uh, a lot of us in the Microsoft UC space are uh, very familiar and have a background in OCS, um, Link Server 2010 and 2013, and then Skype for Business. Um, and, and if we are talking about providing enterprise voice solutions, we are talking about having an uh, on-premise SIP trunk or, uh, or, or PRI lines coming in, providing those PSDN capabilities to our physically on-prem Skype for Business environment. Uh, if we take a look at this, this screen here, this is a very generic overview of what an on-prem enterprise voice solution looks like. We, we see we have our corporate LAN. Uh, various users and endpoints, whether it be uh, physical third-party phones or uh, or your your soft client on the laptop or even mobile devices, they will all be registered and homed on a Skype for Business front-end pool. And when they place calls, those calls will get routed through that pool to the Skype for Business mediation server. Uh, could be a co-located mediation server and as this logical picture depicts it as a separate pool. Uh, and then that mediation server does whatever is needed to translate the call uh, and send it on to the session border control or direct SIP trunk if that's what's set up or, or whatever device gateway happens to be between the mediation pool and your uh, PSDN cloud. This is the traditional picture of how calls are handled in an on-prem Skype for business environment where users have been able for enterprise voice. So when we think about phone system, this same thing is being done in Microsoft's cloud. It just removes all the physical components for being, from being handled at the local uh, physical level. So back to phone system, where is this available? Phone system itself, which is the cloud PBX portion, it is the, the, the virtual PBX. It gives you that call control functionality that is available worldwide. Uh, users across the globe can be assigned the phone system license in Office 365. However, utilizing Microsoft as your actual uh, carrier, where you, your, your PSTN calls are going in, uh, are coming in, going out, you need to have a calling plan license assigned. And that gets a little bit more tricky. That licensing takes a lot of work at the individual country level. And so, while users can be assigned phone system across the globe, users in only a handful of countries can be assigned calling plans, which gives them the minutes they need and the capabilities to actually place them and receive those calls. 
you see we've got uh, the United States, United Kingdom, Spain, Netherlands, uh, Puerto Rico, Ireland, Germany, France, Belgium, and most recently, Canada uh, is currently in preview. Uh, calling plans are available for all these countries. Audio conferencing, formerly known as dial-in conferencing, is made available in 90 countries, meaning we have the capability to have local dial-in conferencing numbers for 90 different countries coming into the Skype for Business phone system. Now, some talking about the capabilities and what phone system can actually do. You know, we've covered the fact that it's a virtual PBX and we've got calls coming and calls going, and that's great. But what can it do a bit more in depth, right? Because our, our, our physical PBXs have traditionally done much more for us than just calls coming in and calls going out. Well, we have our PSTN calls inbound and outbound to start with. And then we've got our audio conferencing capabilities. Uh, like I said, this was formerly called dial-in conferencing. Uh, this gives you your call bridge capabilities. And again, this is available in 90 different countries. On top of that, we have call queues, which are also known traditionally as hunt groups. Uh, and these are based upon lists of users that exist within your Office 365 environment within uh, Azure AD. And those distribution lists can be assigned to a call queue. You can assign uh, a physical, uh, an actual phone number to that call queue and have uh, different types of thresholds and timeout settings and uh, behaviors that happen depending on how calls are flowing in and out of or getting stacked up in those queues. Building on that concept, we have auto attendants or what was known as response groups in the on-prem world. Auto attendants also can have a phone number assigned to them or a SIP URI if, that's, uh, if you wanna nest your auto attendants and they give you that menu capability. Someone calls a main number at your company and you want them to hear menu options zero through five, and you want them to have a recorded greeting and different business hours or after hours behaviors and functionalities. Uh, that's what auto attendant does for you. Uh, a lot of capabilities have been recently surfaced in auto attendant. It is becoming much closer to being um, at feature parity with what response groups is on prem. Uh, custom dial plans and normalization rules. When phone system was first released, you had to rely on the dial by name capabilities within Skype for Business, um, or else dialing in a full number uh, to, to be called. There was no concept of dialing extensions or other special one-off dialing circumstances. Uh, this was a bit of a inhibitor for certain organizations trying to think about moving to the phone system in Skype for Business Online. Uh, but in, in recent months, custom dial plans and normalization rules were released. They are currently available for modification via PowerShell. And in the not too distant future, we should be expecting to see these being able to be managed within a GUI in the uh, admin centers that are provided to us. Azure Voicemail. This gives us the capability to have voicemail uh, direct. You know, we, we that's a very regular staple of any phone system. If you are not going to answer your phone, you need voicemail to be present for people to be able to leave you messages. Uh, despite the notion that many people have of wanting to just be done with voicemail as a whole, it is still a very real part of many organizations' strategies. And, uh, and, and Azure hosts the voicemail capabilities for Microsoft phone system. Finally, we have a series of Skype for Business Online certified SIP devices from a number of third party providers. And these are your typical. Um, you know, the, the, uh, your, your physical handsets that sit on your desk that log into Skype for Business and give you conferencing capabilities or looking up directory capabilities, uh, all the good stuff that you would expect a Skype for Business uh, physical handset to do. All right, so what are some of the recent phone system additions? The, uh, the product groups in charge of developing and modifying and maintaining the phone system uh, are, are a very busy group. They uh, have been releasing a lot in recent months. Among that, we have phone system integration into Microsoft Teams. Again, that was a Q4 release, one of the bigger announcements relating to phone system recently. Uh, calling plans for preview. We just touched on that uh, for Canada and preview. And that is uh, being evaluated at this time. There are a large number of organizations within Canada that are kicking the tires on that, testing it out and giving feedback. 
and hopefully we'll see that going to general availability any day now. Uh, auto attendant updates. So most recently, the ability to have hybrid support for auto attendant was introduced. This was very important for organizations that had some users homed on-prem and some users homed at Skype for Business Online. Now, regardless of where the user is homed, they can be a member of an auto attendant. Uh, they can receive calls from the auto attendant as part of call queues. Uh, inbound SIP routing. There, this is instead of using a phone number for auto attendance, you can nest auto attendance and sign a SIP address to it so you can save on phone numbers. You can define a holiday set. And then you, uh, there was some proper, there were some caller ID formatting issues as related to inbound calls from an auto attendant, and those have been cleared up recently as well. Uh, call queues, a lot of the same updates came to them, hybrid support, inbound SIP routing, caller ID, but also the ability to have serial routing and then the ability for agents to opt in or out of a queue instead of just being signed in automatically. A lot of, lot of things have happened recently, and we will see more of those rolling out in the coming months. All right, finally, uh, on the phone system, what are our hybrid options? We just touched on hybrid and what, the, what that looks like, how we have auto attendance and call queues being able to support users from both online or on-prem. But the hybrid options look, in general, like one of these three scenarios. You have your pure online environment. And this is not technically hybrid, but it's on here for uh, the sake of comparison. And this is where you're using Microsoft's phone system. You're in one of those 10 countries that have calling capabilities, a call plans released. All of your users are homed online. There is no on-prem component whatsoever. And you make and receive all of your calls through that online system. Now we have what's called full hybrid, uh, or as it's also been called OPCH, um, on-premise call handling. And in this case, we see from this article, we've got our, on, our uh, Skype for Business Online environment up here. We've got our PSDN network out here. And then down below, we've got these physical Skype for Business servers with users homed here as well. This little arrow connector here is showing us that we're in a hybrid relation with some users sitting down below and some users sitting up in the cloud. In each case, either of them are able to place PSDN calls uh, through either if they're on-prem users, they're placing them through their on-prem SIP trunk or whatever other method they have available to them. And if they're online, they're placing calls either through the Microsoft as their carrier solution, or they could be placing calls through this hybrid relationship and out via the physical infra uh, voice infrastructure that exists with the local SIP provider. Finally, we've got this option called Cloud Connector Edition. And this is where we don't have actual Skype for Business registrars installed on-prem, but we do have a uh, series of VMs that are packaged up into what's called Cloud Connector Edition. And this primarily serves countries and instances where you have a full Skype for Business online environment. All your users have phone system licenses, but maybe they don't, they're not in a country that has calling capabilities uh, as far as call plans go. So they need to call, uh, use the PSDN functionality of an on-prem voice infrastructure. Maybe there's an SVC on-prem, some other gateway. They will install this CCE device on-prem. A hybrid relationship becomes defined between the two, and then calls get routed down to the mediation server component of CCE and they then get routed out to the PSTN via the on-prem voice infrastructure. So just a high level overview of what our various hybrid options are when using phone system. Okay, now phone system is, as we've mentioned a couple times, making a transition to Teams. Uh, not leaving Skype for Business online in the dust when I say that, but the phone system capabilities have already begun surfacing in Teams and they will begin to surface more and more and more capabilities are coming out. Uh, what we're looking at here is a picture of Microsoft's roadmap. If you wish to view that roadmap with, uh, with the other, um, other modalities in their meetings and messaging, you can go ahead and scan that uh, QR code and they'll take you to the actual roadmap so you can view the full thing. Uh, but here, for purposes of phone system, we're looking at the calling portion of the roadmap. And we can see that available today are a great number of things that were all introduced in the, uh, at the end of Q4 2017. 
uh, in the coming quarters here, namely second quarter of 2018, which we're right around the corner. And then at the very end of the year, Q4 2018, we have a series of other features and functionalities that will be released. Um, if you take a look through there, I'm not going to touch each of them and, and talk about what they are for the sake of time, uh, but there's some pretty big components that Teams is still uh, waiting to be released. They, they, there, are, there is basic call control functionality now, and for organizations with very basic calling needs, they may be making a transition to Teams already. But for many other organizations, they might still be waiting on organizational auto attendant and call queues, for instance, or boss delegate uh, support. Um, the, a hybrid connection to Teams, which is not currently present. Uh, support for those third-party phones with Teams. There are a number of things that are still on the roadmap and still coming out. Um, and then for that Q4, we have some of these more enterprise voice-like items that we don't even see in Skype for Business Online yet. Um, we only see these on-prem with Skype for Business Enterprise Voice. Items like call part group call pickup, location-based routing, and shared line appearance. These are slated to come to Teams at the end of Q4 of this year. Now, let's say you're part of an organization that wants to start toying with the idea of Teams or exploring it, having a little group of pilot users that are going to start playing with different settings and, and trying out uh, trying out teams on different levels to see how it might fit into their company strategy. How do you manage that relationship right now? Well, there was a series of PowerShell commandlets that were released for, with, um, for, for controlling a team's interop policy. And as we can see here, the, the, the verbs are all different. We have your typical ones, your new, set, get, grant, and remove. Uh, and they're all part of the dash CS teams interop policy. What you're controlling with these policies are the below parameters, the default client that is used for chat, the default client that is used for calling, and then whether or not you're going to allow your end user uh, to override these settings. And so if we for, for that last one, we see what that looks like over on the right hand side. Here we're looking at the settings from within a Microsoft Teams client. And at the very bottom, if you have enabled, if you've marked that allow end user client override parameter to be true, you will see this box at the bottom that says preferred calling application. And you can choose whether or not you want to receive calls in Teams or you want to receive calls in Skype for Business. Um, this can be very handy if you uh, want to give more control over to certain users. But in many cases, to avoid confusion, this option might be left to false and it may be something that's more controlled by the IT group. Uh, in either case, what these, what these different commandlets are doing is saying whether or not you're going to be using Teams and Skype for Business in a side-by-side -side mode, or whether you're going to be using them in some sort of, uh, your, your Teams is your main client now, or Skype for Business is your main client. Uh, before you go jumping in any one direction, though, it's very important to understand what is currently available in Teams, what works in Teams, and what doesn't, and how it fits into your overall strategy with other solutions. So is Teams in your phone system future? Uh, if you've begun thinking about how and when Teams is going to become a part of the collaboration strategy at your organization, uh, there might be a few pieces that are, 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 are a component of that consideration. First, you're likely waiting to see feature parity occur between Skype for Business Online and Microsoft Teams. Um, if you're already using Skype for Business Online, chances are all the features and control that you have there, you're going to want in Teams. We're getting closer to that point, but it is important to note that that's not currently there. Keeping an eye of that road on that roadmap is, is key. Once you're ready and, and, and you've reached either the point of feature parity or you're willing to accept what's not present, you will start your transition from Skype for Business online, either a few users or all your users or however you plan to do that, and you'll start moving them over to Teams and, and, and testing and using, uh, using Teams as your calling client or your chat client or some other combination. And as far as it being in your future, though, the thing that you have to really keep in mind is, okay, there's this roadmap. 
but we also have all these existing business processes. We have contact centers. We have other things in our environment that are an important part of the way we do business. We need to know if Teams, despite it being a feature parity with Skype for Business Online, if Teams is going to fit in and, and, and sync up with all these other utilities that we're using or ways of doing business that we've become used to and that are a part of our regular business processes. How do you navigate that change? How do you decide what the right strategy is, when the right time to move is, how this is going to work? When it comes to that, partnership is key. It's very important to partner up with organizations, with, with people in this industry that understand not only where the technology is at, but how the technology relates to the other technologies that you might be using within your organization. Uh, that's where both integration partners and Enghouse uh, come, in, come into play. And, and to talk a little bit more about how, uh, how Enghouse can, can help in that direction, how their, how their calling solutions come into play. I'm going to go ahead and turn the reins over at this point to John. Thank you, Josh. Hi, everybody. This is John Cray from Enchouse. Uh, I run the product management team at Enchouse, responsible for uh, the portfolio of products we, we take to market. And the portfolio is centered around contact centers. So um, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about that today with respect to this Microsoft panoply, uh, this whole realm of solutions that Microsoft has. Um, so as uh, as Josh said, I think um, it's important to understand all the trade-offs as you're making a decision what flavor of Microsoft solutions is the best flavor for you. And especially with Microsoft in this transition right now between um, both sort of the on-premise solutions they have, Skype Online and Teams and the sort of uh, wealth of solutions they have, it can get a bit complex. And one of the areas of complexity, as Josh was indicating, is Contact Center. Um, there currently is a challenge with fully going onto Teams for Contact Center. I'll try to lay that challenge out for, for you guys, and uh, and then we can sort of talk through what the options are. But but basically, um, the the case, you know, as Josh said, Microsoft is is rapidly adding functionality in the cloud for the phone system in the cloud uh, and, and focused heavily on adding that functionality in a way that's exposed through teams. And Josh put up the roadmap so you could see that there's some stuff being delivered for teams uh, this coming quarter um, between April and, and June. There's more stuff being added into teams the back half of 2018. Um, teams is going to be a very, very strong cloud PBX but, you know, is not yet got all the functionality that, for example, an on-premise Skype for Business system has. So they're in this transition. Um, as we know, for most businesses, there are contact centers. There are customer service centers. There might be help desks. There might be a, a group of agents handling sales um, and so on, HR and so on. So usually in most businesses, the contact center is an integral part. But of course, as with the case for most new functionality, you know, you typically start with something that has the functionality you need and then introduce the programming interfaces later for external third party applications to be able to access the functions they need. And that is the case with, with Teams. As Microsoft moves to Teams, they don't yet have the APIs that are needed for something as complex as a contact center application, you know, to be able to access the ability to programmatically control, say, monitoring and recording of calls, or the ability to programmatically, you know, forward a call to an expert in the back office, you know, along with data, things like that. And so in the absence of those, We've been working with Microsoft and integration partners and Enchouse. We're both partners of Microsoft working on the best optimal solutions. So we do have solutions available to provide contact center functionality, either in the on-premise configuration that Josh laid out or in the cloud PBX configuration that Josh laid out. And we're going to talk to you about what those options are right now. So. 
Here's the good news. So Edge House has been uh, delivering contact center applications on Skype for Business with Microsoft phone systems now for well over 10 years. Uh, we're, we've developed a fully integrated solution now to Office 365, and we have options that actually have zero on-premise footprint. So effectively, they are cloud contact center options, and they don't require any IT or any applications running on the on-premise, you know, in your particular um, uh, in your particular offices. We actually have been doing this for a while, as I said. So we're we consider ourselves to be the industry leader in integrating contact centers to Microsoft PBXs. We have over 550 deployments worldwide across many countries around the world integrated to Microsoft phone systems. And we've been working on this for quite a long time. So we've got a lot of experience both in best practices for what it takes to deliver a high value contact center using Microsoft as the communications framework, as, uh, as well as in how to best work with Microsoft technologies from an API perspective and from a habitation perspective. So we're working together with their, with their frameworks. And then, you know, we, because we're co-development partners with Microsoft, both uh, Edge House and integration partners, we're in a category that Microsoft calls high touch partners for Office 365. And we're one of their preferred applications for both contact center. And then we also have an application for receptionists handling calls and directing those calls throughout the business in, a, in an attendant console format. So we have both contact center and attendant console status within Microsoft in this high touch category. So as Josh was indicating, you know, it's important to pick the right partners when you're making the decisions about what to do, you know, as you move forward with Microsoft as your communications framework and integration partners can help you with the Microsoft side and, you know, integration partners and Edge House working together can help you with the contact center side of that in terms of the trade-offs and, and decisions you have to make. One of the key precepts that we've taken as we move forward here is we want to be able to give our customers a choice. What's the best fit for them? And that choice really has a couple of different decision points. One is, do you have a complex high-end contact center requiring lots of channels of communication, voice, email, web chat, instant messaging, SMS, social media? You know, do you have a lot of different kinds of interactions that you want to flow in and out of your contact center? Or are you a basic operation that just handles voice in a relatively simple way? And depending, and, and the reason to offer choices, you know, kind of on both of those, uh, both of those paths is because of cost. If you're a very basic voice only operation, you can actually control your costs pretty significantly and have a simpler solution that is significantly lower cost than if you're handling a higher end omni-channel, you know, complete um, multi-channel operation that handles all kinds of communications in a very complex environment. So being able to make that choice is important. And then similarly, what's your choice of underlying communications fabric or, or framework? Do you want to use the power of an on-premise PBX using the traditional Skype for Business on-premise architecture? Or do you want to you want to foray into this new world of Skype online and or Teams and start moving your PBX to the cloud? And again, we want you to be able to make those two choices. What kind of contact center environment do you have? And on what framework do you want to operate? We want you to be able to make those choices and want to be able to provide options for you to be able to make those choices. Um, so let's dive into actual contact center call center and start with the very basics of what a call center agent has to have. You know, this gets to the, the heart of the question. Why can't a call center agent simply run, say, the Teams client and they operate completely out of the Teams client and that's good enough for them to operate as an agent? It's certainly possible to do that. You could take calls through the call queues in the Skype 
uh, in the in the online PBX in Teams in the cloud, and you could route the calls via call queues through Teams to the person, and then that person could use the Teams application to do things. But what does that not provide? Well, first, the queues system, the call queues system in Teams may not be sufficient to make all the intelligent routing decisions that you want to make. Maybe you want some of those routing decisions to be based on who the customer is, not just what they're calling about or what number they've dialed. And when that person, that agent, takes the call, maybe you want to provide information about that customer to that agent. Maybe you want to allow them to loop experts into the conversation. Of course, you want your agents to be able to go on break. So they have to be able to take breaks. And maybe you want different kinds of breaks that they can take. And you want to track how long they're on break when they take those breaks. When, you're, when they're handling calls, maybe you want to capture information, analytics, metrics about what they're doing with those calls, including, say, a wrap-up when they, when they finish the call. What was the disposition? How is there a follow-up? Did they resolve the customer's issue? And maybe you have supervisors who want to be able to monitor those agents and track what they're working on and how they're doing in real time, and then also look back at historical data about their performance. If any of those questions are true, then you need something more than just a call handling application. You need a contact center application to help those agents do their jobs well and help their managers have insights into how to make them better. And that's what we're getting to with these options that we're providing. So we'll start with option one, the basic voice-only call center option. We have a tool that we call Touchpoint Agent, and that tool runs on the desktop and connects directly into Office 365. So the way it works is you simply set up your call queues using the mechanisms that Josh was referring to earlier, an automated attendant or auto attendant in the cloud, feeding the call queues with call with with uh, calls that correspond to a, a particular skill or need and then you when the agents take those calls they're leveraging this touchpoint agent application running on the desktop which can handle calls directly from that cloud environment the way that works is from a technical perspective we run on top of the skype for business client and use an SDK or API to control calls in that client. That client runs under the covers. You don't actually use that client or see that client. The agent is using the touchpoint application on top of that client to leverage this sort of call control stuff. Now, you can run that client side by side with Teams, meaning that same user can also be using Teams for enterprise use, for things like conference calling and the various things they would do as a, as a member of the business. But when they're actually operating there in their role as an agent, they're using this touchpoint agent application to do the functions associated with call center agent capabilities. And then we take the data, we capture that data in the cloud, in Microsoft Azure, so that we can report off of it and provide supervisors and managers access to that analytical information about the operation of the call center itself. So that's basically architecturally how it's structured. I'll show you really quickly what it looks like. So let's take a look at, there down at the bottom of the screen, you see this touchpoint agent tool. And it's out of the way. It runs out of the way, and you can control things like going on break and have different kinds of breaks that are configurable in the system and all that from this little toolbar running in the tray. That leaves the majority of the screen for the agent, the real estate of that screen available for other things like CRM applications and so on. And now in this case, we've gone on a coffee break. We're watching that counter count down. We're capturing that data in real time. So we know how long the agent was actually on break. And when we go on break, we're synchronizing that with the Skype for Business client. If you see down at the bottom of the screen, you can actually see the Skype client running, then they just saw that it went from green to red, and you can see that we're synchronizing the state with that client. That's so that the agent doesn't get, a, get interrupted 
with other calls coming in, even internal calls. And we count down those timers and we track that data and we're storing all that information in Azure in the database so that we can report on it. If the person wants to make a call to another person in the enterprise, they can do that. They can do searches in our little tool here, look at people in various departments, make calls, IM them, all directly from this application. So they, they never have to leave this little toolbar. They're just working from within that to control all this capability in the system. What happens when a call comes in? In this case, we're, we're talking about a little wedding cake manufacturer here. They got a call on the weddings queue. We've delivered that call through that, that weddings queue, call queue in the cloud, and we did a screen pop of the Salesforce application when the call came into the desktop. So we're seeing here integration with CRM, where when the person gets a call through that call queue, we're able to pop up that customer record. So again, we're tying the data to the customer to the CRM application, so you can do that. In this case, now I'm running, I'm, I'm on the call. You can see a little counter down at the bottom. It's just counted up to 30 seconds. I'm on a call. And I and while I'm on that call, I can, again, use the capabilities of the cloud PBX in order to bring other people into the conversation if I need to. So right from here, I can reach out to a back office expert, in this case, Sandra. And I'm looking for help from Sandra to try to get help with a cake order. In this case, I can IM her directly from this tool. Again, the majority of the screen is available for other uses like CRM. And then Sandra can reply to me and I can loop Sandra into the conversation and so on. So all of this is available right from this little small footprint toolbar. And that provides the power of a call center agent that the call center agent needs in order to manage these, these calls. Back to Salesforce, I can update the case in Salesforce, finish off the interaction, and move on, and so on. You know, at any time, I can put a call on hold from here. I can hang it up. And then when I'm done with the call, I can go through a, a hierarchical series of wrap-up codes, which, again, are tracked in Azure so that later I can report on the kinds of calls I had and what ended up happening with those calls in the system. If I'm a supervisor, I can see what's going on in real time in the system. For the queues that I have set up as call queues, I can see how many calls came in, what my average handle time were for calls in that queue. From an agent's perspective, I can see which of my agents are currently logged in, what their statistics are for the day. I can kind of see what's going on. And as an agent, I can have my own dashboard. I can see how many interactions I've handled, how long I've been on break, how long I've, I've been available. Um, you know, how many, how many interactions I've handled. And as a manager, I can see these historical reports. And this is tapping into that data in Azure in the cloud. I can navigate through reports about kinds of calls, what, what my, as a supervisor, what my agents did that day, how many calls I handled for the day, for the week, for the month. I can see that, what my average handle time, my average talk time, time in queue, and so on. All available to me. As, as a manager within the contact center operation. So we're seeing here quite a lot of capability all tucked into this very small footprint, this ability to have this application you know, running on the desktop, out of the way in this little tray icon, but meanwhile capturing all this valuable data that I can use to manage my call center. So what we saw here was all the stuff you'd need for a voice-only operation. And this is all the stuff that's offered through this very low-cost, very simple-to-use touchpoint agent alternative. And it provides all the functionality you see here on the screen. But what if I needed something more complex? What if I needed a full omni-channel contact center operation where I'm managing not only calls, but I'm also managing both inbound and outbound calls. I'm managing email being queued in the system. I'm managing calls from my web or chats from my website coming in. Maybe those chats escalate to voice or video calls. I'm managing uh, SMS texts coming in from customers on their mobile devices. I'm managing social, social posts or, or tweets coming in and getting queued. 
What if I have a very complex omni-channel operation and I want much more management capabilities in terms of managing a full-blown contact center? Well, we wanted to be able to offer that option as well. So this is not now the low-cost touchpoint agent option. This is a more complex option that allows you to have that same touchpoint experience, but now we're seeing the richness of omni-channel introduced into that. So what we see here are a number of interactions of different types being handled at the same time. But again, it's leveraging that same touchpoint experience. So in that way, if a customer, if, if one of our customers say started as a voice only operation using touchpoint agent, but then wanted to evolve into a full rich omni-channel experience, they're still using that same touchpoint application. They're just using this additive functionality to introduce all this nice omni-channel capability. Here we can see we're talking to a customer, Rachel, we're chatting with her. And, uh, and then I want to escalate that chat to a call. And then maybe I want to text Rachel with some information. And then I want to navigate back to another customer that I'm responding to an email on and so on and so on. And that's, it's a very rich experience with a lot of integration of data and channels together into one experience. And you can see how these different things are handled within this one common UI fabric. How does that work? Well, Josh was referring to hybrid configurations in his part of the presentation. And we actually leverage one of those hybrid options in order to support this full rich omni-channel experience. We have a hosting partner who hosts our communication center, contact center application integrated to a hosted Skype system, which is then connected through a technique that Microsoft uses called Federation to the Office 365 Cloud PBX users. And those users are basically visible in the hosted Skype system to our application. So it's seamless. To, a, to one of our customers who wanted, say, an Office 365 contact center, all you have to do is sign up for the the uh, Skype online licenses that require the E5 or E3 CALS, run those licenses in the cloud, and then install our application on the desktop as an agent or manager, and you're ready to go. And that's it. There's no on-premise equipment. There's no on-premise IT required. It's all handled through the hosting partner and through our cloud management services. So this is a nice capability because it provides all the richness of the full-blown Skype for Business system, but with the, our customer, with the contact center, not having to worry, or the IT department, not having to worry about having any on-premise equipment at all, because everything is handled through this hosted, federated integration to Office 365. So you get all this power. You get the power of of multimedia and multi-channel, including instant messaging, calling, video queuing, and all kinds of things. You get the ability to silent monitor and record calls, have supervisors listen into those calls. Supervisors can even go so far as to whisper coach to agents so that the customer can't hear. Very rich functionality because those calls are all handled through conferences in the hosted Skype system. And then, of course, you also get all that great UC capability from Microsoft as well. It's all blended together into this very rich omni-channel environment. So basically what we're seeing here are options. And again, we wanted to provide options to, to allow you to say, go the low cost route if your voice only is simple, or go the, the higher end, more complex route if you want um, more rich omni-channel capabilities. And if you end up going that higher end route, we also wanted to provide options to be able to do that with on-premise equipment if you want to manage it yourself, or to be able to leverage this communication center online capability if you want zero IT. So for us and integration partners, it's all about options, and we want to be able to provide you that rich, that rich solution for, you know, in, with whatever needs you have for your contact center. So again, as Josh said, I think it's important to pick the right partner. It's important to understand what your options are and to be able to have choice, right? To be able to go down the path that makes the most sense for your business. And with uh, with the two of us working together, 
we believe we can provide you the, the, the richest and best options available in the market, along with the best experience with Microsoft that we can bring to the table. So with that, uh, Josh and I would love to answer your questions. Yeah, thank you very much, John. And thank you everyone for joining us. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, we'll be taking questions um, through the chat pane on the side of the GoToWebinar interface. So feel free to start typing your questions in there. We've had a few come in during the presentation, so we're gonna start with those. Um, I think this first one is mainly geared toward John. So John, you said that Touchpoint Agent is voice only and that Communication Center Online supports all of the contact center communications channels, including email, chat, and so on. What are the other key differences between the two applications? Ah, uh, right. Yes, we, we touched on that briefly, but um, in it, it, because of the richness of the hosted Skype environment that we use for Communication Center Online, we're able to bring to bear quite a lot of additional management capabilities. So whereas the Touchpoint agent has a, collect, a small collection of reports that's used to manage your call center operation, the Communication Center Online solution has over 100 reports, which dive into all the aspects of managing a complete, complex omni-channel operation. And there's all kinds of ways of slicing and dicing the data as a manager that you get that are kind of well beyond what's cap what we're what we're able to do with just the touchpoint agent Azure database option. Um, so the richness of the reports is one of those areas. Another is like some of the supervisor capabilities, like we mentioned, the ability to monitor, listen in to calls in real time while they're happening and then coach agents during those calls. Those kinds of more sophisticated capabilities are not available today in the touchpoint agent option but are available in the Communication Center online option. Uh, and so, you know, it really comes down to, I think, not only the channels of communication, but the richness of the management tools that you have for the, for the, for the two applications. Great, thank you. This next question is directed more toward Josh. Josh, since we have phone system users that are homed in Skype for Business Online using the on-prem voice infrastructure for PST and connectivity, will users that are homed on-prem be able to use phone system for PST and connectivity? Great question. And you know, it might seem that uh, that relationship, logically you would think maybe that would go both ways there, but uh, no, unfortunately, for users that are homed uh, on-prem, they can only use their on-prem voice infrastructure for PSDN capabilities. They are not able to leverage the phone system capabilities for outbound calling uh, in, in Office 365. Definitely, definitely can go the opposite direction. Uh, users homed online can use your on-prem infrastructure with a phone system license, uh, they just don't have to have calling plan licenses, uh, and then they'll they'll be routed down through your on-prem voice infrastructure. But uh, yeah, not not the opposite way. Okay, great, thank you. Back to John, how would you compare Communication Center Online to other cloud contact center applications available in the market today, and what are the key advantages of this offering? Okay. Good, good question. I think, um, you know, there are cloud options, as we all know, available for contact center in the market. Um, there are actually only a handful of players that have focused on Microsoft for cloud contact center options. Um, a lot of the more generic public cloud contact centers have not built what I'll call deep, rich integrations to Microsoft PBX solutions, um, either on-prem or cloud. They're relying on kind of a generic what I'll call just sort of SIP integration to Microsoft, which has very, very stark limitations. And you don't find out about those limitations until you actually start diving in to a comparison of capabilities of the applications. One example, though, would be something like call monitoring and supervisor barge and whisper and that kind of capability that we were referring to. The, that's not possible to do unless you integrate to Microsoft at a, at a very deep level where you're tapping into conferences in the Microsoft system. And again, a lot of the cloud PBXs don't, don't do that. Um, the escalation of media is another one. Like if you wanted to say, 
if you're a help desk and you wanted to queue instant messages from a Microsoft system, for example, in your queue, and then escalate those across media to voice or video, again, not possible unless you're deeply and richly integrated to Microsoft. So it's worth exploring, if you're looking at public cloud contact centers, how rich their Microsoft integration is. And that's something, since we've been doing it for such a long time, we focused heavily on the richness and depth of that integration. Um, and then, of course, you know, we're many of the public cloud contact centers are relatively new to the market. They've been developed in the last, say, two to four years. And Angel's contact centers have been around for 20 to 25 years. So over that 20 plus years, we've developed quite a lot of capabilities in the system for how to handle queuing and routing, for how to, for all the depth of reporting that we have, for the supervisor tools, for the agent productivity tools available on the desktop, and so on and so on. The list goes on and on. Again, I would encourage you to look at the richness and depth of this application versus some of the newer entrants for, for public cloud contact center. Great, thank you. It looks like we have time for one more question. So Josh, back to you. While Teams is an interest and clearly part of Microsoft's vision for cloud-based unified communications and collaboration, what sort of control does an IT organization with a company have over releasing Teams to only a subset of users, perhaps even looking down the access to a subset of features to begin exploration? For example, can calling be left out of the Teams experience for a small group of pilot users? users until a later date. Right. Um, yeah, so there, there are a couple different mechanisms in place. First, the policies that control uh, how much of Teams you are using will give you that granular level of who is going to be using, you know, what client for what purposes. Second, you can enable Teams for just certain people within the organization, and you can disable it for others. So if you want to make sure that the rest of your organization wasn't uh, digging into that and checking it out and, and starting to go in there and create things uh, that you maybe maybe don't want created in the organization yet before you get a better handle on teams, you can lock this down to, you know, you know your five or ten, whatever your pilot group's going to be, and allow them to use teams. And then within that group, you have decisions to make about how much you're going to have them using teams. Are they going to fully switch over and be using Teams for everything, if they can do that, if they don't have needs and requirements that limit them to being still uh, on Skype for Business Online. Um, and then you can also say, you know, maybe we, we want them to do side-by-side -side capabilities. There are a variety of options and in-between settings and, and ways that you can slice that up and dice that up depending on how much you want to start exploring it, what purposes you're considering it for. Maybe you are considering it for phone system purposes, but maybe you like what you see on a collaboration level and you don't really want to think about taking your unified communications capabilities over to it yet. You want to keep your chat and your presence and your um, calling all within Skype for Business Online and just have people starting to dig into teams for the team and channel collaboration features. That's possible as well. Uh, it's all controlled via different uh, policies at this stage that are available in PowerShell. And hopefully in the not too distant future here, those those will be opened up to us via a GUI as well. Uh, but yeah, the, the answer there is yes to both. Uh, it just it did take some, some strategy, deciding how you're going to go about that, how to implement it. And if you have struggles with figuring that out, again, choosing the right partner can uh, can go a long ways. Thank you, Josh. And thank you, everyone. That concludes today's webinar. Later this week, you'll be getting a link from us with a link to the recording as well as to further resources. Thanks again, Josh and John, for presenting today, and thank you all for attending. Have a great rest of your day.